Hey there, my name is Brian F and I'm a Street Fighter V competitive player and content creator for CLG. Or at least I was until a couple days ago. So you might have heard the rumors and yeah, unfortunately the rumors are true. This is Thursday as of recording of this right now and the rumors started circulating on Monday. Sources, CLG sold mass layoffs brands future uncertain. CLG being one of the oldest organizations within esports, been in LCS I think from the very beginning of its inception and has, uh, you know, spread its brand coverage across many different esports titles. And within the past year or two, got into the FGC, the fighting game community, which is what I'm a part of. And, uh, you know, my fellow uh, FGC comrades were doing a lot of work. In fact, we were pretty busy in the past month. Less than a month ago, CLG FGC brought on Magi on the, to their melee squad. IBDW Sunday night won first place at a major. And, uh, you know, Ramala, Chrissy CH, and Apology Man were still on the plane home from Evo Japan when we got called into that meeting on Monday to let us know that, yes, these rumors are true. <laughs> <laughs> so as you might piece together, we were surprised. There was no signs of the ship slowing down, taking on water. Things were kind of moving and growing, especially within my section of the CLG brand, which was CLG FGC. So it was pretty surprising news when we got the call that said, hey, emergency team-wide meeting, uh, please join call in 20 minutes. And it's not my first rodeo. Esports is not my only career path. So I know what it means when you have an org-wide meeting set up on short notice. So it's never anything good is what I can tell you. Anyone out there, brace yourself when you have one of those meetings suddenly sprung upon you. So what really happened? CLG as of 2017 became a subsidiary of Madison Square Gardens, MSG. Yes, the venue, you know, New York Knicks, New York Rangers. You can see here on the Wikipedia page, their counter logic gaming is right there, subsidiary of MSG. Well, MSG, they decided that as of Monday this week that they're done with CLG. They're selling off the brand onto another esports team and they sold it to energy energy is another esports uh, organization over a million followers on twitter and they had been out of the uh, league of legends game for quite some time it was confirmed to be true by greg kim former ceo of clg during my time greg was actually a great guy i loved working with him and in his letter to the people today he confirmed that CLG will be closing its doors and will be sold off to energy. And this is now why we're able to sp uh, publicly speak upon the rumors because I wasn't trying to break any clauses here and uh, mess up any severance. With that said, there was a lot more to CLG than just the League of Legends and other esports teams. There was the CLG FGC brand, which is what I personally was a part of. We had built a big brand in the past year and a half or so. We had the CLG FGC Twitter account. We uh, had CLG Run It Thursdays, which was a very unique tournament series. And we also were building the CLG FGC YouTube channel as well. And I was really proud of all this. I was really proud of the brand building that we were doing with CLG FGC. I think we we're doing a lot of good work. But we did, you know, a, a slightly more highbrow version of team FGC team org content. And uh, I think we did a lot of stuff we were proud of. We did a lot of philosophical discussion pieces, podcast sort of discussions fun pop quizzes, a bit more highbrow combo trials because we would produce our own custom combo trials and, uh, you know, actually learn the aspects of different fighting games. So it was a lot of fun doing this and I was proud of what we, we built. But after the brand was sold to Energy, uh, I'll let Andy Miller of Energy, you know, take it away and explain exactly what they're doing. Hey everybody, I'm Andy Miller. For those of you who don't know, I am the CEO and founder of Energy. Today is a really big day for us here at Energy and for all the Energy fam. So we're super excited to announce that we are back in League of Legends. So after a many, many year absence, after being relegated, trying to figure it all out, in a bunch of years we clawed our way back and here we are. Um, we're super excited to announce the acquisition of Counter Logic Gaming or CLG to the Energy family. Here's what's gonna happen. We are acquiring CLG uh, as of this announcement. So we're keeping the league infrastructure intact, the league LCS team, the academy teams, all the coaches, the analysts, everybody down to uh, Chef Phil, and we'll be working out of the Culver City uh, facility. Uh, there are definitely changes to the uh, CLG org, and we appreciate everyone who, over the years, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this org to get to the point where now they can become a part of energy. Uh, we thank Madison Square. I don't know if he realizes how that last sentence comes off. 
We appreciate everyone who worked with CLG and put their blood, sweat, and tears in it for years so that it could eventually be acquired by another esports team and then immediately shut down all branches except for the League of Legends, which include the entire CLG FGC division, the Apex Legends division, the CSGO rosters, all the content creators and speedrunners, and all the staff that made this all a reality, which is a lot of people. I don't know if that line was thought through. I don't know if he intended it to sound that way, but it's not the honor you think it is <laughs> to get sold to another company and then laid off. <laughs> Just saying, I don't know. I mean, business is tough, I get it, but it's not, you know, you're trying to make it all sound good. I think that's one of those moments where you can just be like, hey, look, we don't see how we can make money from these divisions and that's business. I think the being transparent and, you know, just frank in that would have come off less sleazy, but it is what it is. I won't hold it too much against them, but a lot of people lost their dream jobs um, in this in this moment. So it's a, it's a time to be to be a little sensitive with the the way things are going but that's the reality of the situation listen league of legends is what b brings the big bucks even to this day and that's just how it is uh so i don't blame energy for making this move once you get into esports that's just how it is so i kind of get it i kind of get it i would have chose my words a little bit differently if i was uh andy here but that said, NRG now owns the CLG brand. What will become of CLG in the NRS, or sorry, in the LCS, I don't really know, but it seems like they're leaning towards rebranding because uh, this NRG League account that follows me um, is not NRG League. This was a CLG Twitter account, CLG Gaming, and they already rebranded to NRG League. So I, I'm pretty sure they're just trying to squash all the history of a legendary esports org completely revamp it and uh i don't know maybe maybe preserve some old tweets if you scroll down a little bit you still see there's there's cody winning his major and then immediately getting laid off from his job <laughs> the next day uh so that's good timing so who knows what they'll do with the history of clg here uh but basically clg is done so so it be what it do it be what it do but you know i don't really have any hard feelings about it because when you look at CLG and you look at esports, it is kind of bizarre world, right? Like when I got pulled into CLG and even prior to all this, I, I've known for a long time personally that esports doesn't really make sense. And I think we're seeing right now that that bubble is really popping in a lot of ways. So CLG is now done. The you know the league team was sold off to Energy. Uh, FaZe is having a whole bunch of issues and might dis be disbanded soon. TSM is having a whole bunch of issues as well. A lot of esports teams over the past couple months and years are kind of either downsizing or imploding to some degree. So that's just how the economy is going. People were putting a lot of money into esports and sizing up, scaling up, investing a lot of money, hiring a lot of people, and there wasn't really a model to make money, right? Where does the money come from to fund all this? And when you go to the, you, when you see the offices and you see the staff and you see people working on a great passion project, it's beautiful to see, but also in the back of your head, you gotta understand like this is not sustainable. And that's always kind of how I viewed it. And that's what something that motivated me within my little section of the esports world. I felt motivated to try to make moves that could turn this into something that generates some kind of revenue. Now, there are ways that, that the esports teams generate revenue, right? So they would they did have sponsorships. CLG had Bud Light Gaming, Alienware, and Spectrum. So there was ways to bring in money. It wasn't completely without revenue streams, but it was not necessarily the most sustainable sort of venture. And uh, that's been discussed to great lengths amongst many people in the esports scene about how uh, these teams have been massively overvalued and a lot of them are funded funded by venture capitalists uh, trying to invest and in, make a quick buck or not a quick buck, a, a long buck. It's been they've been funding this for a decade now and it's it's not really making a return. So things are kind of falling apart at this moment. But I feel like within CLG FGC, that was something that we were doing better than most. And that something is what I was proud of. So, for example, like I mentioned, uh, we were doing the the run it Thursdays, um, which was actually bringing in funding, right? So run it Thursdays was going on and Spectrum sponsored that and was able to provide prizing for the community and also fund the, the commentators. Like everyone was paid who was involved 
with CLG Run It Thursdays. So I thought, thought something like that, some kind of branded tournament series that was a super valuable asset that the CLG FTC brand had in order to bring in revenue. And we were also, beyond working on the Run It Thursdays, we had the content game, right? I feel like content was something that made sense to me as a content creator. You put YouTube video on YouTube, uh, ads run, you get money. So there was something that was bringing in money. Obviously, the scale of our content creation needed to increase rapidly or it needed to increase uh, by a large percentage. We weren't pushing enough videos and we weren't getting enough views yet. I feel like there was a lot of potential here on the CLG FTC channel to grow this to a larger degree, potentially do more sponsored content series with you know um, recurring episodes. We had the guest the rank format going on. Maybe we could have sold ad spots for that or had a sponsor for certain shows that we did. We had the FTC, the CLG FTC podcast as well. So I feel like there was a lot of potential with this to be something that actually was able to get money into the org. So that was something that I feel like we're, we were building in the right direction. So I feel like within this small bubble, we were doing something that could potentially make money in the long run. Um, but this small bubble is just one little pinky on the beast that was CLG and which is, you know, really just like a tiny zit on the back of MSG and they finally popped it and, oh, you know, boom, we're gone with it. So that's just kind of the breaks. Now that said, for me personally, I had a an amazing time with CLG. I knew that the people who were working on CLG FTC and in the CLG brand, they genuinely cared about esports and the FTC and wanted to put out, you know, quality work that they were proud of. So I have nothing negative to say about CLG at all. I disagree with maybe some business decisions or maybe some things we could have done better, but everything we did, I could tell was like actually trying to grow a mutual beneficial relationship within the FGC. And I think that's a really awesome thing to see. I think the problem is the current landscape of esports just doesn't match with the old way of doing things at all. What we see now, a lot of teams that are thriving are teams that are okay with losing money. In fact, what we're seeing now is the rise of content creator teams, right? We have DSG Disguise run by, you know, content creator Disguise Toast. We have also Moist Esports, which is run by Moist Critical and now Ludwig, right? These teams lean into the fact that they are wasting money. They are run by people who have tons and tons of money. These content creators have made it huge and now they can just burn their cash on passion projects that were originally related to their genuine interests, right? And they lean into that. Just today, Ludwig posted the video where he announced he signed Zayn, top melee player. We still can't figure out how Ludwig Ogren keeps getting into our bank account. We're excited to welcome Zayn to the squad. It's part of the brand to say, hey, we are wasting money on esports because we just love this shit so much. And to me, this seems to be the future. In fact, it's also the present. You look at other brands like Red Bull. Red Bull has been sponsoring fighting game events and players for years just because they think that shit's cool. They think that shit's cool. That's all it is. So it just comes down to what they care about. And there's, there's a hint of a strategy behind this as well for the content creator teams because content creators love to react to things without creating original content. That's their favorite thing to do, okay? Nothing better than sitting back, relaxing, watching someone else do all the hard work and, and reaping the rewards for it, okay? And what they can do now is have an endless stream of content created for them because now they have an esports team or an esports player. They can watch the tournament streams of their sponsored player or esports team and they can root for them and that becomes content within itself and that content can actually generate revenue there's actually like a mechanism here to make some kind of return it's it's going to be a couple of youtube videos but at the scale of what ludwig and moist critical do with their youtube videos it might actually make them some kind of money <laughs> in in the long run so i feel like there's a there's a much stronger chance that these content creation teams they last longer because as long as the content creators are making money, they're probably just gonna keep paying them. And also it's more transparent. You don't know when a venture capitalist, you know, they're, they're gonna turn off the valve of money and your whole esports team explodes, right? You never know when that's gonna happen. And it, it happened to CLG. We had no clue. We were, we were scaling up, signing new players, doing new projects. Street Fighter Six is just on the horizon, right? And then suddenly it's gone. Oh, well, there it goes, right? So I think you're less likely to see that with these kinds of teams because they know what it is. They are wasting their money for the love of the game. And uh, you know, that's a beautiful thing 
in its own way. But that said, where does that leave esports and the FGC right now? It's hard to say that this is a bad look for, for esports and the FGC, because I think esports as a whole is on a downturn. And Capcom, I think, is trying to position themselves in such a way where they can capitalize on that, right? So, of course, we already know that the CPT for Street Fighter 6 coming up, over 2 million in the prize pool, 1 million for first place. They're putting this big flashy number over like almost 50% of the prize pool. It's just one person in first place. They're trying to make sure that this big flashy number attracts some eyeballs. So this seems like a lot of money to the FGC. It's kind of nothing in the world of League of Legends and, and other esports but they are positioning themselves when the LCS is weak. You know, League of Legends is actually declining in the West and the teams are not doing well. So there's actually an incentive for teams to potentially just throw a little bit of money into an FGC division because they could potentially make big gains in a niche market. There's also the Street Fighter League, which uh, Capcom has been leaning to for a long time, where they have the franchising models where, uh, you know, you have established teams set up and you have guaranteed screen time one of the big problems with open bracket tournaments for fgc is that you invest in a player even if they get ninth place and have an amazing run and beat daigo tokido evo and capcom cup champions they might do it all off stream never get any stream time or if they do all the only match they get on stream is the one match where they get eliminated from the tournament and they're done in three minutes right so it's a, it's really risky to invest in a fighting game player because unless they win that day they might not get that much guaranteed screen time, so you're not really building brand awareness. And if you're not building brand awareness, what are you really doing? At the end of the day, brand is everything. You need to get eyeballs on the brand so that you can get eyeballs on the sponsors so that sponsors want to sponsor the team. That's the current model. So Street Fighter League addresses that by saying, hey, just pay to have your team in here and you're going to have eyes on your team guaranteed because it's going to be a 10 week long event. And even if you guys go 0 and 30, you're still going to be there. Like <laughs> there's no risk in terms of screen time. You will get the same screen time as the first place team practically. Uh, but in the reality of it, let's have a reality check. Esports Illustrated, why do you guys think FGC content isn't covered much in the esports industry? Uh, it's not an esport, no support from publisher, community gatekeeping other. I thought this was a ridiculous poll. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> These options, I was like, what are, wh what are you talking about? And then uh, JM Crofts come in here with the much needed reality check. Pretty simple, IMO. Here we go, Rocket League, 36,000 playing 40 minutes ago. Rainbow Six, 60,000 playing 40 minutes ago. Counter-Strike, 1,140,000 playing 40 minutes ago. Street Fighter V, 1,800 people playing 40 minutes ago. All-time peak, 13,000. The all-time peak is lower by a significant margin than the playing 40 minutes ago for all these other games, which are larger esports games. Now, is this a little unfair because a lot of the FGC player base is based on console and not necessarily PC? Yeah, sure. But also, even if, say, there were 30,000 people playing Street Fighter V on console instead, that's still also bad for esports because the PC market is where the sponsors are looking to make a profit. <laughs> the people who are using PC are the ones that buy random mouses, they buy random keyboards, they buy graphics cards, they buy hard drives, they buy things to upgrade their system. There's a lot more products you can sell to a, a PC consumer. So it's not good. These numbers are bad. And you know what? That's just the reality of it. Fighting games are just much smaller than other games. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, street, uh, street Fighter Esports and Fighting Game Esports can be easily bought out. But will teams even think to invest in them? No, I don't think so. They don't even know we exist. They don't know we exist. It's just the reality of it. Do you think Andy over here knows what Street Fighter is? I mean, he probably knows about Street Fighter 2 back in the day. But does he know that Street Fighter 5 exists? I, I don't know. Does he know about Melty Blood? Probably not. That reality check is important because when it comes to the individual to the players, you need to remember that you should never need a team. I think that's super important and that's been the the reality of it for a long time, but you should never need an esports team. You 100% need to build your own brand and build financial stability on your own without an organization. And I've always felt that way. Even when I was on CLG, that meant, that meant nothing in terms of me stopping my own brand building, own streams of income, content creation, that sort of thing. The reason I was even picked up by CLG, of course, was not because I was getting first at every tournament. I wasn't winning everything the world over. It's because I was pretty good, 
but also way better at brand building than the rest of the competition. My YouTube channel is going strong, the Twitch channel is going strong, and I was just positioned in a way where I was uh, an asset that CLG wanted to bring into their CLG FGC squad. So as a player in 2023 in the FGC, you need to build a brand. You need to do content. You need to establish revenue streams. You should never have to rely on a sponsor to pay your bills. That just does not exist in this day and era. You need to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. I still work full time. That's the beauty of the situation for me. I, I feel terrible for the rest of CLG because there are people who are given it. They're all working full time, healthcare, all that. They lost their real ass jobs. They did. They really did. Their real ass jobs, which fucking sucks. And it's, it's a terrible economy right now. It fucking sucks. But as a player, I think you should have a balance. I don't think we're in a position where you can do this full time unless you're the top 0.01 of the 01, you know, at a million zeros in front of that 1%. Maybe if you're Tokido or Daigo, the, the esports scene in Japan is doing a lot better. In the West, maybe if you're Punk or if you're Idon, Sonic Fox, sure. Your goal should not be get results so that an org picks you up and then pays your bill. You need to be able to establish a revenue stream from your skill via content creation or brand building. And then the evidence of that brand building is what will attract an org to you. So this is the reality of the situation. By the time you get sponsored, you should have an org begging you to join because you have proven to be an asset that can add value and bring in revenue. They should be begging you to join. I get sick to my stomach when I see people tagging themselves under these pandering posts from organizations. Who should we sign next? Me, 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 me. Don't ever do that. Have some self-respect. Please don't ever do that. I understand making a post on your own personal Twitter with your stats and broadcasting out to the world that you're available. I get that. But man, when the FGC people are begging under these huge orgs to sign them, why are they going to sign you? You are a gnat in the world of esports. Daigo could be doing that and they wouldn't even see him. For, like They're up here. We're down here. You got to remember, we are nothing. <laughs> Remember, please. I feel like the FTC doesn't understand that. We are nothing. What you need to do is build value yourself. That's the only way. <laughs> it's very sad to see. Because uh, listen, you gotta understand those, those orgs, when they do that, who should we sign next? They're just, they're, they're engagement farming. You guys know that, right? So so don't, uh, you know, save yourself the pain and, and keep your dignity. But yeah, FTC, please invest in yourself. That's all I had for the uh, the primary discussions. I'm hoping everyone at, at CLG lands on their feet. They worked really hard to build an amazing brand. They're all great people. They believed in what they did. They believed in the communities and the players and the content creators that they brought on. And I will always respect that. And I really enjoyed my time with CLG.